Hey everyone, Reflected here. And I want to tell you about an important update that's coming to my campaigns. After 2.8, I'm updating all my campaigns to make sure they are well oiled, work 100%, and also bring them up to par with my latest stuff. One of these updates is about bomber formations. I saw a playthrough video of Mission 3 of the Blue Nose Bastards of Botany campaign by Tactical Pascal. By the way, make sure you subscribe to his channel, it's great. And I was devastated to see the bomber formation was all messed up. They worked fine for four years, and now they were just colliding, flying nose up or nose down. It was a clown show. I investigated the problem and realized that the mission got corrupted over time, which it definitely shouldn't, but it did. So I had to set them up again to make it work. So I sat down and set up every bomber in every formation, in every mission, in every one of my campaigns again. It's a hell of a lot of work. You can't possibly imagine. It's also a very good example of why I'm not supporting any kind of alternate versions of my campaigns that would just double such workloads. Anyhow, while I was at it, I did some more research and I found an amazing video explaining USAAF bomber formations and how they evolved month by month throughout the war. So now you'll have period correct formations depending on the year and month when the missions take place. In 1942 you'll see the javelin formation, bomber elements of three planes in a V formation flying at offset altitudes. Two elements form the squadron and three squadrons formed a group, a high squadron, a lead squadron, and a low squadron. The formation looked like a giant V of 18 bombers at staggered altitudes. The next group followed behind in a similar formation. Then, in 1943, you'll see the compact combat wing. Typical for times when deep penetration missions were flown without fighter cover like the Schweinfurt Raid, for example, Mission 5 of the Big Show campaign. When the 8th Air Force could throw in more bombers and they needed to fight their way to and back from the target. Same three plane elements with altitude offset, two elements from the squadron, a lead high element and another one behind and below. Three squadrons formed a group, the left and right squadrons behind the lead and also at offset altitudes. Then three groups together from the wing of 54 bombers in a combat box. The next wing would follow six miles behind, slightly staggered towards the sun. Most missions, however, take place in 1944, where you'll see 36 plane groups. This formation improved bombing accuracy and was easier to maneuver and to defend for the little friends who could, by this time, escort the bombers all the way to the target and back. Elements of three bombers without altitude offset, four elements forming a squadron of 12, three squadrons forming a group, and that's it, no wing. Then another group would follow four miles behind, slightly offset and staggered towards the sun. Of course, as always in my missions, the player can choose to fly with a much smaller formation if your PC can't handle it. I also improved performance by tweaking the carpet bombing task. You know, when lots of B-17s drop bombs in DCS, FPS goes to single digit while the bombs are falling. I worked around this by making only the lead flight drop and one or two others, but now, due to a bug or something, if the lead has a bombing task, then the whole formation drops no matter what. So to work around this, I removed the bombs one by one from each bomber of each mission of each of my campaigns. Now only a handful of bombers actually drop and your FPS will remain more stable. Then again, carpet bombing shouldn't cause such FPS drops in the first place, but that's a different matter and not something I can fix from within the mission editor. This was an extremely repetitive task to set up and took me ages, but you know me and how important these little details are to me, so in the end it was worth it. With these formations, my campaigns will be a little more historically accurate and that's what matters to me. Keep an eye out for the next update, my campaigns are going to have a massive changelog with fixes and improvements. 
Alright, stay tuned for more updates, and don't forget to subscribe. See ya!